Are you ready? Can crush us. Hey. It don't really get no better than better this. The than. podcast that you're looking for. If you're really heavy in the wrestling, hosted by the Mark. Energy that's so amazing. Gotta keep it entertaining. Rep the can crush a nation. Yeah, you know what's going down in the ring. In the ring. Lights out when you hit a ding ding. ding, ding. Knock them out like boom, bada bing. Bada bing. Hold it down, you can crown me the king. Got a shout out to the Miz and Duke the Dumpster. We choke slamming everybody, power driving. Hit them with a face buster. Yeah, yeah, this the show you need an end. It ain't no need for waiting. Mark, hold it down for the can crush a nation. All about wrestling and keep it entertaining. Can crush us wrestling podcast. Time to break them. Let's go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can crush us. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can crush us. Let's go. Hey, this is Mariah May, the glamour, but you knew that. And you're listening to Can Crushers. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another Can Crushers Wrestling Spotlight. I am your host, Mark the Mark Martinez, and I'm a little bit uh, worried about this podcast that we're going to have. This man is definitely smarter than me. I mean, his initials are MIT, so that within itself is so much that I had to think about it for a while. It's Mr. Intellectual Tavius coming on the show. And, of course, we're going to talk wrestling. We're going to talk about how he got into wrestling, his career and all that, and what he thinks about heading to New Era Pro Wrestling, which is really awesome, is that's going to be starting up in April in northeastern Pennsylvania. Really proud to be part of that. But we'll dive into all that with MIT. It will be short the rest of the way out, trust me, because I could mess that up, and I just don't want to sound like a fool to him because this guy's smart. In and out of the ring, this guy is smart, uber athletic as well, but I'm not ruining the podcast, so we'll get there. Of course, you know, we have to do our due diligence and pay the bills and yada, 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 stuff like that. So I'm here to tell you, it is Royal Rumble season. You want to order a shirt? Definitely is not going to be here by the time Rumble rolls around on Saturday. But if you want to order a shirt, maybe the new Royal Rumble shirt that you see on Saturday... Make sure you check out our show notes. We have a WWEshop.com affiliate code, and it helps support us. We're very transparent with our codes on here, okay? Sometimes you'll get a discount. Sometimes you will not. It depends on what you buy. But if you know, hey, I want the new Rumble shirt, or I want the new Cody shirt, or so on and so forth, use it. Help support one of your favorite podcasts in Can Crushers and buy it. You may get a discount. You may not. Also, Al Snow and Hooligans down there at Collar and Elbow are producing amazing shirts. Support them. Really support them. I've had shirts from Collar and Elbows for years now, and it's just like the day that I got it. The material's awesome. It's super soft. It takes a beating. There's cool shirts. There's a Dusty shirt. There's uh, a Macho shirt that has Al Snow and Head on it. There's Good Brothers stuff. They have a lot of shirts that are in remembrance of people, Animal Shad. The list goes on and on, and all those proceeds go back to their families, so that's really awesome. Shorts, hoodies, all that cool stuff at Collar and Elbow. In our promo code, once you pick everything that you want, the little box will pop up. You know how promo codes work. Type in Can Crushers. Capital C and Can, capital C and Crushers. It's all one word smashed together. And you'll save 10% off your entire order, and you'll help support the podcast. Guys, our new store is opening. Check out everywhere pre-recorded. By the time this comes out, our new store will be opened, and you'll be able to see the link on our Facebook. It'll also be in the show notes and everything like that. So we'll have some shirts and hoodies available now. New merch to come soon. Maybe some old merch to come. Maybe some random stuff to come. But make sure you check out the Can Crusher store as well that is now open by the time this podcast comes out. So make sure you check it out. Where can you find us? Oh, anywhere. On socials, we're on Facebook, X, Instagram, Threads. We're there. And where can you listen? Well, you're listening on your favorite uh, device right now, essentially. App, whatever, is Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, Alexa, IMDb, BoxCast. The list goes on and on. 
And don't forget about Podurama. Right now, Podurama, if you sign up for a lifetime membership, you'll get 50% off. Okay, so that's really cool. Podurama, it's an app. It's available on every device, and it's seamless. If you're listening on your Apple device and you switch over to your you know, Android device or your laptop or whatever, it, it, it continues to go right where you left off. It's a really cool app. I've been listening to it for a, a while now uh, of other podcasts that I listen to, and it is really cool. So make sure you check out Podrama if you're in the market for something like that. All right, we're getting set. Al Snow is going to be back here in about a second to tell you more about Collar and Elbow. And then when we come back, MIT is we're going to get into his life in professional wrestling. And who knows what else? He'll probably show me up on something. Wrestling. A love and a passion we all share. I've started a wrestling brand. The wrestling brand. A brand founded on the aspects of wrestling. Two entities working together to create a product that connect emotionally for people everywhere. Collar and Elbow is the brand. Passion and love for wrestling is the drive. I am Al Snow, and this is Collar and Elbow, the wrestling brand. Hey, it's Lifeguard Ross here. There's no running whenever Can Crushers is on. Welcome back to Can Crushers, folks. You heard how intimidated I am about my guest. He's coming on. He's definitely smarter than me, but we'll, we'll still have a nice conversation. Mr. Intellectual Tavius. MIT, how you doing? I'm doing good, sir. How about you? I'm doing well. I really am. How, uh... I know you're in PA, so let's just call spade a spade. How are you taking this weather that we're having the last couple of weeks? Well, I mean, the weather's been a little interesting, to say the least, besides, you know, wearing five layers of clothes to try to stay warm. Um, but other than that, I've been staying inside, just trying to keep in shape. The kids running me around, so they keep me in shape, too. Yeah, that that's more than uh, dad to dad. That's sometimes more than wrestling, right? Yeah, basically. <laughs> All right, let's do the rewind to dive right into wrestling because this is the meat and potatoes of Can't Crush Your Spotlight. We like to find out how you got into the business, yada, yada, yada. But when you were a junior, you know, MIT, essentially, who showed you wrestling? Mom, dad, Aunt Sally, Uncle Joe, a cousin? Like, how did you find this crazy sport? Uh, so pro wrestling got shown to me by my father, um, who actually is a professional wrestler. Um, he wrestles for a company called PAPW out in Connecticut. Um, so I had been into it since I was probably five years old. So that'd bring us to like 2002 era. So like kind of the end of the attitude era a little bit, but I also went and would watch back into like the late nineties, early nineties, all that stuff. So we'll get to the TV stuff here in a second. Uh, Clearly, you know, I don't do homework anymore uh, on guests, or I possibly would have known that, that your dad was a professional wrestler, too. Need to get him on the show. That would be awesome. So did you go to a lot of events with him? You were always then around this business. Um. So ironically, my father didn't get into professional wrestling until his mid-40s. Um. So he got into it then. I had always been into it, never went to a live event, actually, surprisingly, until I was actually in the business. Really? Um, yeah, it was kind of funny. Um, so I went and found out dad was in the business, and I ended up moving up to Connecticut for a little bit because I had a job, uh, a different job up there for a little while. I uh, was doing that and kind of was like, all right, dad, like, I want to get into the business. I'd been to a couple of uh, the shows for PAPW. Um and started training and training and i think like six or seven months into training i went to a show with uh one of my buddies up there and went to a show with him and i was like all right like this is this is even better than what it looked like on tv um but yeah so i've only ever been to a couple of actual wwe live events but yeah i've i've been in the business because of my father now uh since 29 no 2018 nice that's awesome 
there's always a dad moment on the show, and you hit it early because I, I love that's the connection that fans don't know about you. And I, I love, listen, we all know about Randy Orton and Sasha and da 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 da. Indie stars don't get their flowers like this, and this is really cool that you're kind of, you know, the rest of the podcast will be about you and things that you've done and everything, but giving your dad flowers right now is really awesome for me. Big smile across my face, by the way. <laughs> and well, also what kind of made it cool, too, is like dad was a partial owner with the company, so he, at the time, he had a pickup truck, so he was the one dragging the ring around, he would drive the ring, so like, my first intro into the business was like dragging, loading the ring up, breaking the ring down. Like I just did ring crew all the time and I just got used to like, all right, I'd get up early and make sure we were getting everything ready in the truck and then get the truck to where the ring was or the trailer was for the ring and then load it all up, bring it to the, the venue. So that's what I was doing my first couple months there. Sorry for that. And then, um, I sort of started training and then while I was training, then would still do that with my dad, like show days, I would go down. I would, even though I was on the show, I would still go and be driving there four hours before the show even started to get there with the truck. That's awesome. That's, that's the life that I wanted to live. It is, it is, but I'm happy this way back here now. But it, if your dad only started in mid forties, that's where I am. So maybe there's a new era of something coming around that I don't know, maybe I can jump in the ring, right? <laughs> maybe you never know so besides your dad clearly being one of your favorites growing up when you were watching the the major products let's throw it like that who were some of your favorites growing up so when i was really young i really only watched wwe um when i got into like my teenage years i got into tna yeah it was tna then um before it switched to impact and then now back to, now TNA. Back to TNA. are you happy about uh, that by the way I am happy. I am I, too. I'm, I'm a TNA kid. I grew up TNA. I grew up with like Samoa Joe, AJ Styles, like all those guys on there. So I, I, I loved watching it then. So then when it switched to Impact, I kind of lost a little love for it and didn't really watch it as much. But yeah, so I kind of got into that a little bit. So it's really just, I'd watch Monday Night Raw and SmackDown and then I would watch TNA, which was like on Thursdays or like Wednesdays or something. Um, and then other than that, I had no, I didn't know anything about the Indies. Like I didn't know about the Indies until I got into indie wrestling. So like, I never watched any. And then once I like got into indie wrestling, my buddies were like, oh yeah, like, this guy, this guy, this guy. And I'm like, who are you talking about? And they're like, the in other indie guys. I'm like, what do you mean? And like, there's big name indie guys? I'm like, no, they're just in the mainstream. And they're like, no, there's indie companies that are really big. So then I started learning about like guys like Osprey, who then went to New Japan. But then I learned about like the early stages of Ricochet and early stages of Seth Rollins and Samoa Joe and Drew when he left WWE and went to the Indies for a while. And then like when Cody was on the Indies. So that was when I really got into like ROH and a lot of like the big, and now I watch like IWTV all the time. Um, I watch a lot. I watch honestly more independent wrestling than I do. Oh, I agree. Mainstream wrestling, to be honest. I watch a lot of wrestling open. Yeah. I, I agree. Uh, kind of, we're just bouncing back and forth. This is horrible because this is going to be like he's just copying MIT right now. But your <laughs> your story is the same as mine. I mean, clearly a little bit of age gap, but uh, we didn't know anything about the Indies up here either until there was a there was a show about two hours away that we're bringing in some legends who were not going to be in the ring, but they were signing. But then they said it's sponsored by it's defunct now X Y Z organization that has shows every month. They're like what are you talking about to have shows every month? This is like a one-off card, yada, yada, yada. And they were passing it out, and that's where you just stumble across it. I mean, it was 90s for me, so I'll throw it out there that there wasn't <laughs> internet or anything like that. You just had to be in that city to know that they wrestled there all the time because it wasn't coming two hours away. You you didn't know about it. There wasn't any way of – so we just kind of then followed them around that way and anything, and that's how I found the indies. I don't know anything about the indies. I mean – Corey Graves was wrestling in Pittsburgh, you know, an hour and a half, two hours away forever. I watch his matches now, but I didn't know that. It's crazy. Yeah, no, see, that, that was the big thing for me. Cause my, um, my mom and dad didn't live together um, from when I was a kid. So, like, my mom wasn't the biggest fan of pro wrestling. So, like, I would watch pro wrestling with my dad when I'd be with him. But then, like, I'd watch it by myself in my room. And, like, that was really all I saw. So, like, my mom wasn't really big. Like, And, like, I live in the town I live in is, like, literally a town of 1200 people mm -hmm. 
and the closest city is Scranton, which is 45 minutes away. So like to drive there, we never really looked to see, I never really looked to see if there was any shows out there. And I never thought my mom would want to take me to one. Um, so like, I only ever watched stuff on TV. Like I said, that's how I really didn't get into any indie stuff. And then once I got into the business, well, then I was like, I was traveling around with my buddies to shows just to go see shows. Yeah. Yeah. I'm telling you, and I'll say this, and it's not because I know you personally or anything like that. Some of the best wrestling is on the indies. Like, I love the products of AEW, TNA, and WWF because, listen, their production value is amazing. But when you get down to it, you know, the the way that you guys or gals put the, the shows together are phenomenal. And it's just, it's more meet and greet. It's more to know MIT before he blossoms into the X division champion or wherever. And we'll get to all of this, wherever he's going to go here in the near future, you get that personality on the Indies. That's why I always say support the Indies. No. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I've always, and that's why I always have like hashtag support local, yeah. like on all my stuff, just because to me, I mean, honestly, there's been times I think you can get more atmosphere and energy out of a room of 400 indie fans that that are packed up against the edge of the ring than you can in the stadium of 18,000 people. Agreed. Agreed. So besides being the ring boy and everything else for dad's promotion, what else did you kind of do to prepare yourself for wrestling? Were you, were you in sports? Were you a, and I'm not knocking you because I was a drama kid in school because it's, it's acting, right? Um, there's there's parts of it, yeah. Um, I, I'm one of those guys, right? I don't really necessarily, I don't really consider myself, I guess, a performer. I look as it as a wrestler. I was an amateur wrestler in high school. I played football and I, I ran track. Um, I did a little bit of lacrosse in college for a club team, but other than that, I mean, I just I lifted. I've always been like an active person. I've always wanted to stay in shape, so I did a lot of lifting. Um, but yeah, when I got up to Connecticut, I mean, I was only up there a month month and a half and before i said i wanted to get into the business but like i had been lifting a little bit but not as um not as scheduled and religious religiously as i did once i actually got into the business and after i got through my first couple of days of training then i was lifting four days a week and then training three days a week and eating three to four thousand calories a day and i went from when i got up there i was a hundred and 70 pounds and i think by the time i left i was at 187 all muscle though not like my my muscle my gut well that, that was that, well that was also back when i still drank i don't drink anymore i've been uh clean and sober now five years or going on five years and congratulations march thank you that's thank awesome you. So, that is yeah, really so I, awesome. I had i had a little bit of a beer belly and stuff back then so i always wonder now if i got back up to 190 again if i actually i think i'd look a lot better now than i did then so you threw some of my questions out the window, kind of, and that's okay because I, I got the, the dad moment of, like, how did you find the company? Essentially, it was through dad, and what did your family say? So dad clearly okay with it. When you tell mom you're getting into wrestling, though, how did she really take it since she wasn't a fan? Um, By that point, because I was already um, – I was 21 at that point. Like, she, she wasn't – she was, like, whatever. Like, I had a job. So like she knew I wasn't just using like just professional wrestling. Like she knew I had a regular job and this was just like my thing I did on the weekends. Um, so she was cool with it. Um, she was a little like, eh, I don't know, because she wasn't a big fan of it. Then once she started seeing pictures and videos and not of me training, but actually just me working matches, then she actually started to become a fan of it. And she was like, wait a minute, like, you're actually really good at this. And I was like, ah, I told you, like, ah, see, this, this isn't as bad as you thought it was all these years. Now, and, she, uh, now she's helping you make merch, right? Um, no, my mom doesn't yet. My mom is, my mom gives me ideas. She does give me ideas. Like, oh, you should do this or like this. And I do keep them in a file in my head and stuff like that. Um, just, just gotta find the time for the money. And kids sometimes take a little bit of the money, but the kids come first. So <laughs> a little bit of the money. Come on. <laughs> But um, no, yeah. So once, like, she's been to a couple matches of mine. Um, she was at the first Smash show I wrestled up here, and she went to another show after that. Um, just hasn't been to one since then. Really, um, it's kind of hard to bring the kids because my daughter is four, and my son just turned one, 
So they're kind of at that age where like, they're still a lot. They still want to run around a lot. So it's kind of hard to keep them to sit still for a little bit. Yeah. They're even worse at 17, just to let you know, for the years ahead. <laughs> you just wonder where they are sometimes. <laughs> so, yeah. So let's talk about training a little bit, because yours is a little bit different. You had the mindset that you, you kind of knew you're getting into. I'm sure there wasn't, and I'll say this you know, wholeheartedly, I'm sure there was never a moment with you then that said, eh, this was cool, but um, I don't know. You were just all in all the time, right? Yeah, no, there was never a day I didn't want to do this. I mean, there's definitely days. I mean, I'm sure everyone else has said there's definitely days. It's like training just sucks. Um, Or just like you just some days you take more bumps than others. So you're just sore than others. But I don't know. It's just I, I love this. stuff. I love this kind of stuff. I love getting pushed. I love that like a, a sport. I mean, I consider it a sport, a sport that is going to push you and try to break you. And it's definitely one of those things that like I have horrible anxiety. So like doing this for me is a huge thing of like getting out of my comfort zone, like get past the anxiety, go walk out through the curtain. And 90% of the time, the second I walk out through the curtain, I'm fine. But you see me before I'll be sweating. My heart's going through my chest, um, which I always hear. Like, if you lose that, you should probably stop. Yep. So I guess it's good. I haven't lost it yet. <laughs> MIT. It's the same way with me. Uh, I'm in and out of that curtain a hundred times a night, essentially, but that first time, I'm like, uh, I wonder if anybody else wants to announce for the night. I don't know. You know, it, it's just that little bit of, mm. and then the song hits, and then you, you kind of peek out, and you kind of get Jones in a little bit. But once you cross that curtain, that crowd just engulfs you in anything else. It, it's just, I always say this, and I don't mean it mean, but it's a sickness that we have, that we just love it so much that... We do it for the fans. We do it for ourselves. We do it for, you know, our pseudo sicknesses and everything to go out and showcase who we really are, right? It really is. And honestly, I could agree with that wholeheartedly. I mean, because a lot of my friends even too, like, they'll bust my chops. <clears throat> like, oh, you do that pro wrestling stuff, that fake wrestling. I'm like, yeah, yeah. And I, just, I blow it off. I don't, I'm not the guy who's going to sit here and fight to the death about it because I, a lot of them follow me on social media. So I'm like, yeah, whatever you say, just watch the videos. And then as people have started to watch videos, now they look at me and they're like, how do you walk on a daily basis? And I'm like, oh, I thought you thought it was fake. Yeah. I'm like, so it's just, I don't know. It's, every, it's, it's fun to kind of prove the people who don't want to believe it. And it's just, it's just fun. And I just, I love it. It's, I get to feel like I'm a little kid again. I mean, honestly, it's truly what it's like. The amount of times I could, remember, I could recall being on my buddy's trampolines, or even in high school when we I pole vaulted, we had we used to we used to use the pole vault mat. Me and my best friend as our WWE ring. We used to RKO each other and do all kinds of stuff. That's and a first. God, I've heard of trampolines, God, but not the pole vault mat. Yeah, God knows how many times we did stuff to each other that like was not correctly. That I'd look back now and be like, oh God, that was so sloppy. <laughs> <laughs> Critiquing yourself before you were fully trained. Hundred percent. Yeah, hundred percent. You got to do it. If you're not, if you're not over critiquing yourself, then you're not in this business for the right reason. And that's now. You know, years into the business. I'm glad you said that. I'm glad you said that because there's some people who are like, well, I'm doing what I'm doing. I'm just pushing. Well, if you don't make, you know, sacrifices to create, create. Oh my God, Mark! It's like you drank a ton today. To look at yourself and say, oh man, I could have did that better. You're really not doing it right then. No, yeah, and I mean it's funny the amount, the amount of times I've I've come from backstage and looked at people and they're like, oh my gosh, that was that was great and that was match tonight and I'm like, oh, it was alright <laughs> and they're like, what do you mean that was amazing and I'm like, nah, I just felt felt a little off and they're like, oh, you're you're crazy and I'm like, maybe <laughs> like maybe I don't see what you guys see but all right. <laughs> So, no, I'm like, it is nice. It is nice. And I'm not trying to go and reach for, like, make people be like, oh, my God, that was great. Like, I'm not trying to reach for the attention. It's just I, I know what I'm capable of. And also just of when I took t I did take time off for a little bit. So there was a little bit of time where um, from 2019 to 2021, I didn't wrestle a match. I, uh, COVID had a lot was, to do with that as well. Um, COVID and also just, uh, where I was at in life at the moment, I was, um, 
in the beginning stages of my sobriety, but also just starting a family. So I was just trying to go and get used to being a dad first before I was like, all right, can I really commit to doing being a dad and then pro wrestling? Because I'm not going to go and do this and not do it wholeheartedly and not put full effort into it. Um, and it's great because my mom does help me out a lot and she'll watch my kids for me so I can go to shows. Um, but yeah, it's definitely one of those things, man. Or if you're not in, don't do it. It sounds like you have an amazing support staff around you to to do be able to do this. So kudos to mom and every, everybody else that helps you out. Oh, hundred percent. I mean, without them, I, I'd be I wouldn't be able to do this again. I mean, I didn't think I'd even be able to get back into it when I did. And um, ironically, uh, Dustin Waller had a match. He I trained with him up in Connecticut when I first broke in. Uh, me and him broke in together, and. Uh, when he was coming down here, he was again having a match up in Connecticut or up in uh, Hazleton over at Sanctuary. So I drove out to Sanctuary and brought my gear with me. And I was like, I hadn't done it in like three years. And I was like, all right, like maybe I'll just try it. And Trotsky threw me in a match with two guys I trained with in Connecticut because three guys from Connecticut came down and I ended up wrestling. And then they were like, do you want to get into it again? And I'm like, all right, I'm in. I was like, I, I, I got that taste again. And Doing it at Sanctuary, I think, made it even cooler just because of, I don't know if you've been to the Sanctuary, but the whole setup of it, it's just really cool with the whole church aspect and the big entrance ramp with all the lights and the ring. So that was a really cool way to kind of get back into the business and really just be like, no, you got to you gotta dive back into this and not stop. So that's your first match back, essentially. What about your very first match? How how was that? How were your your jitters? Do you feel and see if you you know answer this correctly? And I'm sure you will. You're you're a humble human being. Do you feel you were ready? Because there's times that people are in the ring way before they're ready. Um, I felt I was ready just because I knew how much time I put into it. I was like I said, I was practicing. I was training, not practicing, but I was training Monday, Wednesday, Saturdays for four hours. And then Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Sundays, I was in the gym for an hour and a half. And then it would just consist of eating just 3,000 calories a day or more. And that was all. And then I go to work. So that was all I did. Um, So just living it and just, I would study matches and, um study all kinds of stuff from indies to mainstream to old stuff to new stuff to i got into a lot of japanese stuff that i never thought i'd even be into um and just by the time i was got into my so my first match was technically a rumble so it wasn't like a singles match um it was really fun um I was nervous, but I wasn't like crazy nervous because I knew it was just a rumble. So I already knew the aspect of it. And like, there's not too crazy of what goes on. Um, My first singles match, though, was against Dustin Waller, actually. Um, And that was fun. We opened the show. um, It was New Year's Revolution, I think is what the show was called. That was back in like 20, the beginning of 2019 is when I had my first singles match. And it was 20, yeah, 2019. Yeah, 2019 it was. It was right in January. And we wrestled uh, probably a 12 minute singles match in front of like a sold out crowd we had that night, like 400 people. And that was my first ever singles match. That one, I was a little more nervous for on that one. <laughs> um, just because I knew it was not just going to be me and 20 other guys in the ring it was me and dustin um but it went off good uh we had a couple little hiccups that we could notice but nothing that the crowd would have noticed um other than that man i mean there there was nothing like the the adrenaline high i got when i went through that curtain that night and i mean i I still get that same adrenaline rush every time now just because what i do now is nowhere near what i was doing then i pseudo new question that, I love that because did you get an adrenaline rush like that since, you know, winning a title, you know, doing something really cool, a spot that you pulled off, or was that the highest rush you've had thus far? No, um, that was the highest rush up until last year. Last year, I had a multitude. Um, 
it started when I did when I wrestled Ricky Price, uh, not last year, but it would have been um, the Smash Master show in 2022, um, where I pulled off a over the post dive to the outside. Uh, that was a cool one, just because I um, now that one's kind of in my arsenal, so I yeah. kind of throwing that around from time to time. Um, so it's a cool one just cause it's a really cool spot that like nobody expects you to do it. So it's just, when you do it, the reaction is always really cool. Um, definitely my biggest, my biggest achievement so far was winning the pride title, uh, back in September. Um, that was that the whole energy of that whole day was just so cool. I never, so I'd never been to a comic-con before. And so that was the first time I'd ever been to one. And then getting just so just seeing the comic-con was cool and then once the show started and how quickly the room filled up and then we got to a point where they're like all right there's 500 people in here we can't fit any more in here and the show was starting and i think i was match i think i might have been match one honestly i can't really remember i think i was match one um just because everything was kind of a blur once i went through the curtain but definitely that night that day once i went through the curtain um that was probably the biggest adrenaline rush i've gotten just because of the crowd reaction, they were firing on all cylinders. Um, the first bit, the first move got hit by me of the match, which was just a flying knee, um, because there were seven of us in the match, and like I hit the first move, and the whole crowd already popped. So they were just anything you would hit, they were ready to go for it. Um, I ended up hitting that over the post dive actually that show, which got like almost a standing ovation, which was really cool. Nice. Um, and then ended up winning the title at the end of the match, which and the whole crowd was clapping and standing for me, which was cool. I heard them chanting for me a lot during the match, which was cool to hear that they were behind me and not the other six guys because the other guys had been at that show before and I had not. So it was just really cool to have that kind of like underdog kind of support behind me and just rock and roll with it. But yeah, man, once I got that title, it was cool and. I had it since, and um, I defended it once. Um, not against the original guy I was supposed to defend it against. Um, came down due to sickness. I was supposed to actually defend it against three different people, um, but each guy got hurt and or sick. So the fourth guy took it, and uh, we wrestled. Um, I ended up winning, um, so I'm still the Pride champ. Now going on, I think, five, almost six months. Yep. And yeah, I'm just looking forward. I'm looking forward to get a bunch more defenses in this year and just rock and roll with them, man. So late into the podcast, this is how we do it. We we kind of get some backstory. Tell me who MIT is, but I pause you right there because I have three wrestlers that I'll compare you to when I've seen you live and I've done a little bit of research. These are three that instantly pop into my mind saying, this is maybe where he borrowed bag steals or whatever some of his stuff. And I know it's I'm wrestling. Nervous. I'm nervous to hear this. <laughs> really? Oh, they're all yeah, I'm, I've never heard somebody compare me to other wrestlers, so I'm kind of nervous. <laughs> all right. Do you have three in your head that you kind of are thinking right now? No, no, no. I can't, I wouldn't even, cons- I can't even compare myself to three other people. I really couldn't. Okay. I don't consider myself good enough to compare myself to one person, let alone three. <laughs> well, you, you, that anxiety needs to hit the door because you are. All right. So my three, I got Sammy Guevara, I got HBK and I have the Hardys. The Hardys clearly because you're just, you're crazy. You're doing stuff like that. You're doing the dives. You're doing this. You're doing that. Sammy, because you're fluent. Okay, you were uh, Sammy is my is my man crush. Everybody's heard that on Can Crushers. He's my man crush. You're so fluent, and, and you got the the reactions, the 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 facials of HBK, like the the selling. So those are my three. Well, I truly appreciate that, and honestly, feel humbled because those are three really awesome, or four technically, really awesome wrestlers. Um. Honestly, I definitely would consider a lot of. I could see HBK for sure. Um, Sammy, that surprised me, but I could see it with the fluidity of what you're talking about with him because he is really smooth with everything he does. And the Hardys, I mean, I could understand that 100% because I am pretty crazy with a lot of the stuff I do. Um, so you're saying knocked it out of the park, right? I would say a lot of every one of the guys you hit is is spot on of what I do. Um, I just, like I said, I've never heard someone compare me to a bunch, a couple of different wrestlers, so it was different for me. Um, but a lot of the people I try to 
to beg, borrow, steal from is a lot of, honestly, it's like a, a lot of Ricochet and Osprey. Um, Ricochet and Osprey are two of my favorites. Um, my favorite wrestler of all time, side side note, is just Taker, but there's not really much stuff I can do from Taker because of who he is and just the size of the I was going to say maybe there's a little bit of a height difference, but I'm not sure. A little bit of a height difference and weight difference there. Um, but yeah, it's a lot of Ricochet, Osprey. Um, Ziggler was a big, big person in my personality of just the cockiness and the arrogance is huge of who he is. Um, or Nick Nemeth now, technically. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, he was another, uh, a big proportion of it. Those are all um, great though. Those are all, yeah. yeah those so that, are that all would amazing. Be the three I would try to pull from. Okay. How far you brought up tape study before we take a wrestling break here in a second, but you brought up tape study. How far do you go back? Will you go back and watch if you want to get a little more technical, some Tully Blanchard, maybe some Magnum TA of the eighties or anything like that? Are you kind of the nineties and above boy? I'll go back to the eighties a little bit, not too, too much. Um, there's some stuff in it that does catch my eye, but just no. I like to watch it more as a fan, just because of who some of the wrestlers are. Um, but if I'm watching it to like really try to be like, ooh, I could use that or I could use this, it's a lot of stuff from the '90s, early 2000s. Um, there's a lot of stuff, honestly. I pull from WCW Nitro just because for some reason I feel like I mean I love WWE, but Nitro was underrated at the time just because some of the cruiser weights in there went crazy all the time. The luchas. They they showcase yeah, the luchas like, better than Ray anybody Ray has. Jr. Yeah, and all those guys. Oh yeah, all those guys are phenomenal. I love watching those guys. Um, yeah, and really, that's I mean, that's really it. It's a lot of just like mid two thousands, and then like newer stuff. I mean, I watch a lot of newer like of the new Japan stuff, a lot of Bullet Club stuff. I love Bullet Club. Um, so I watch a lot of like that stuff. Um, Jay White and uh, Prince Prince. Devitt and all those guys like when he was before he was Finn Balor and all that. Right. So it's really yeah, it's probably in there more nineties, two thousands, twenty tens. Can you can you watch wrestling as a fan? Or is does the wrestling wrestler brain always kick in even as you're trying to watch it as a fan? I, I can still watch it as a fan. Um it definitely but I still have those moments where I'm like, ooh, that could level this movie. But like it still will seem very the move or the spot will still be still be very cool to me. Um, it is hard at times because there's other times I'm like ah I saw that coming. Yeah. Um, so it is hard to to switch it. Um, but yeah, no, I can I can still watch it pretty good as a fan. I I still I still pop for a lot of stuff. Like when Punk came back, I I was watching that in my room, yeah. and my kid my kids were asleep, and I almost woke them up. Because I was not expecting Punk to come back. That's a so, good yeah, ad right there. <laughs> I definitely could still watch it as a fan. All right, let's take a break from wrestling a little bit and find out a little bit, uh, you know, personal stuff, you know, not deep diving into your checking account or anything. But you get a day off, and I know there's no days off, so don't give me that. But you get a day off that you can kind of pseudo relax and just, you know, hang with your kids. What do you like to do? What do you nerd out about? I mean, we already heard video games, but what else? Um, besides video games and just watching pro wrestling, um, I mean, I'm like, I'm born and raised in a town of 1200 people. So I got like, my buddy of mine owns a horse farm. So like, if I ever got, we, I went out to the farm yesterday cause it was my birthday yesterday. So I went out and hung out at the farm and just my kids love to go. They like to ride the horses and stuff. So I'll do that or it's really just hang out around the house, hang out with my kids. It's really all I do. I'm pretty, I'm a pretty stay at home person and, uh, don't really have too much time to go out with friends, well, but no, yeah, no. I just I just kind of hang out and enjoy just joy kind of peace of mind because when I'm not doing that I'm not working and work is stressful. So <laughs> work is stressful. Hey, I'm a homebody too. When I'm not doing a podcast or you know in an event or something, I'm either watching wrestling or something. It's just I like shutting my brain off. I, I'm 46. I don't mind shutting my brain off and saying hmm, I'm going to watch Bar Rescue all Sunday and be all right with yeah, it. Exactly. <laughs> Three stupid questions, then we have a guest that's going to ask you one here in a minute from uh, a past episode. But what's your favorite breakfast food? 
Favorite breakfast food. Honestly, a McGriddle from McDonald's. Ooh, I, I thought since you had, you know, the kiddos or something, you're, you were going to tell me that you were a pseudo chef and then you can make this like major like breakfast for them. But you're just, <laughs> let's go to McGriddle. I, 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 can, you know, I can cook, especially because of the kids. They definitely have made me have to cook a lot more. Um, but I'm playing it simple. Like when it's just for me, I'll just stop, right? Try, nice quick drive through trip to McDonald's, grab a McGriddle or two, be on the way. Mm hmm. Not the healthiest, so he's not condoning <laughs> that to be a professional wrestler. But all right, <laughs> all right. I, I get I get lucky enough. I guess you can call it lucky to where for some reason I can eat a lot of food that normally you shouldn't, and I don't gain a lot of weight. That's that's good. But then it comes to a downside because then I eat all the food I should, and I still don't gain a lot of weight. <laughs> so it's a vicious cycle. Let's find out if you're a sociopath or not. When the kids oh, want, well, is that bad? Maybe sometimes family oriented. Yes. When the kids want cereal in the morning, how do you make your cereal? Oh, you got it for the cereal and then the milk. Are you effing kidding me? You're right. I was say if you pour it in the other way, you crazy. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what I mean. Sociopath. You're not gonna. You're not. You're not gonna get everything. Nothing's gonna. Get, not all of it's gonna get covered with milk. It's gonna float. No, you can't do that. There's you got to put it in first, and then you got to stir it up a little bit, make sure everything's coated with milk. There's past guests that has put the milk in first, and then put the cereal, and it's just Gross. it blows my mind. Gross. So you're part of a think tank, okay? Kind of a little bit of a wrestling question, but if you could have a new member, and of course this is fantasy booking, some have passed. Who would be the next member of the think tank? Bobby Heenan, the genius, Lanny Poffo, or who's the third one I wrote down? Oh, Dean Douglas. Honestly, and I don't care what anybody else says, I'm a huge fan of the man's work. I got to go the brain, Bobby Heenan. Yeah. I, I, I don't care what anybody else says. I mean, I don't get around. The other two guys are great choices, but I just, I love the work of the brain, Bobby Heenan, just his reactions and everything he does as a manager and working. It's just phenomenal. Yeah, that was kind of a layup. You know, once I had Heen, and I'm like, oh man, I have to come up with MIT two MIT others. in the brain. Like, how is that? Like, that's perfect right there. Right. All right, let's send it to the past guest so okay. she can ask her question. This is the Cobra Katrina Cree from Montreal, Quebec. And my question is you find out you're about to die tomorrow. So, what is your last meal? Ooh, find out I'm going to die tomorrow. What's my last meal? Honestly, a nice tomahawk steak, some mashed potatoes, and carrots. I like how you threw the carrots in. Carrots are underrated. <laughs> carrots are underrated. I've, I've been a huge carrot fan, like a huge carrot person since I was a kid. I've always loved carrots. I can eat a pound of carrots if I wanted to. <laughs> nice. And the last stupid question has nothing to do with anything. There may or may not be an answer. But how many chickens would it take to kill an elephant? I feel like I should know the destructiveness of chickens, being the fact of I grew up with my buddies at my buddy's horse farm. Um, I feel like you would need a solid like eight hundred chickens to take out an elephant. Okay, that sounds probably about right. And just so everybody knows, no idea about this horse farm thing prior to hitting record. No idea. I will take a picture and throw this out so everybody can see the questions I write down way ahead of time. Listen, we had a move schedule because of my work. So this has been written for about a week now. So, yeah, you should know about how destructive chickens are. So 800 sounds about right. That I mean... That's what I would think. How many things? I've been, I've been around 200 chickens before, and that was a lot of chickens for me to see. So I couldn't imagine seeing 800 chickens. I would have to imagine a couple hundred lose their life. I mean, this is going down a horrible path right now. But a couple hundred <laughs> chickens are going to lose their life. It would take 800, essentially. Oh, probably. <laughs> Train wreck of a podcast. Welcome to Can Crushers, everybody. If you've never been here before, this is what we do. Pete is all over this. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you weren't wrestling, what would you be doing now? 
when a p- teacher, what what kind of, and I'm, don't bring up your shoot job or anything like that, but you know, what would your be your next career? Um, before I was locked in on pro wrestling, I was looking to do something uh, firefighter related. So probably just being like a paid firefighter somewhere. Nice. I respect that. Thank you again. Look, look at you, you being know. a great person in the world. <laughs> You can't let that get out, though, because then it ruins the image in the ring. So that's the thing. You can't let that get out. (laughs) I know. I know. Uh, Let's talk a little bit about Rumble before I ask you the big question. Rumble's coming up this weekend. You're a big uh, CM Punk fan, as am I. Give me the two winners of this year's Rumble for the men and women and how we're going to book this kind of pseudo till mania. Especially with Uh, Seth's injury that we don't know anything about until... We're recording Sunday, folks, till tomorrow. Yeah, no. Um, I I don't know because I kind of see Punk winning it because I feel like they're going to come up with another way to for Cody to finish the story. Yeah, like I feel like there's another pay per view where he could earn a match to where he could go and face Roman. Um. With the women's, uh, I honestly don't know. I could see Belair taking it again. Okay. Okay, even with a little bit of exchange, I'm trying to push you another way because I don't like it, but that's because it's my show. <laughs> even with a little bit of exchange between uh, Rhea and, and Becky? Oh, true. Mm-hmm. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know anymore. Um, I, I get it. I I, I I could see all three. I could see all three of those being top contestants to be tops or the number one person to win and or in the final four. Because I don't know if Becky. Like, I don't even know if they're going to get Becky into the title. And Rita's already got the title. What else is she going to? I mean, you think she's going to get both? Yeah, I don't know. I yeah, I know. I listen. From January, Rumble season, until the last moment of Mania is my favorite time of the year for WWE. Because after that, you can start putting pieces into, you know, kind yeah, of what's going to happen. It's just so crazy right now that you really don't know what they have up their sleeve. And that's what I like so much about it. One and two, I saw somewhere too where apparently Okada is still on the fence of AEW or WWE. Yeah. So part of me wonders... If he decides to pull the trigger, you never know. He shows up at the Rumble or another pay per view. That could be another one. Yeah. Would you mind MGF walking through the forbidden door? I would love that. I would love that. I would love if they stopped doing the whole. Like, I love the fact that AEW works with New Japan and they work with TNA and they all bounce between each other. I love that stuff. I kind of hate the whole WWE like cuts everybody else out. I kind of wish that would be over with now. Um, just because I know you could have so much of a better product, but I know it's all just a ratings war. Um, I would love to see MJF walk. I think MJF is super talented. And honestly, I'm kind of waiting for him to take the step and walk over. Yeah. We talked about Saturday show that – is he pulling a mox? Hey, I'm injured. Give me some time away. I'll re- I'll deal with this contract later. And then he never deals with the AEW contract because he's already signed the WWE one to walk through the door at Rumble. Yeah. I don't yeah, know. I don't know. I don't know. Interested. All right. This is the toughest question you're going to get on the show. Wrestling changes, good, bad, or ugly all the time. Um, if you could change one thing about or because of the business, what would you change just to kind of eliminate it? Politics. Short and sweet. I love it because you're right. Yeah. The politics are awful and they kill the business. I agree. And that was why like, I love, like I kind of love the message of like new era and what they're going with, how like there's no politics. It's just family friendly and not saying that all the other companies around here have politics because they don't, but there's politics in all indie, indie wrestling. It doesn't matter what state you're in, what county you're in, what territory you're in, you're going to find it. Um, so it's, it's just, it just sucks, but it, it'll be there until 
someone decided to stop being a baby. But we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. I'm glad you brought up New Era because New Era is going to be pretty awesome. Uh, I, I can't wait for it to roll out. I can't wait to uh, see you there as you were named a member of the roster this past week. You know, is that a pretty cool feeling? No, yeah, it was pretty cool. It was pretty cool to see them announce me and bring in, let me know, like, announce that I'm the prior champion and hopefully I get to defend it there and we'll see where that goes. I think hopefully we can have another really cool roster. The roster already is starting to line up a bunch of stars. I mean, can't get much better than that. Yeah. Yeah. As long as we keep um, <laughs> maybe some dirt balls like Nathaniel and Donnie away from it, we'd probably be all right, huh? <laughs> well, who knows? Maybe, not, maybe now they're going to be dads. Now they might have to, maybe not. Maybe we might be able to keep them away for a little bit. Yeah. Uh, what's the best advice you've gotten behind the curtain or, you know, kind of maybe even from dad that, you know, started wrestling a little bit before you? Slow down. I go way too fast. <laughs> Have you heard that a few times? Um, yeah, I've heard it a few times. Yeah. Okay. I think, I think it's just the, the, the adrenaline rush. I'm just out there doing my thing. Um, I've definitely had a couple people just tell me that I'm really quick. I've had some people tell me I'm a little too quick. I need to slow down. Um, along with that, I don't know. Just probably, just be you. Don't do, don't do, don't do anything stupid. This is the fifth spotlight of the year, and you're now the fifth member to bring up the whole be you. So Can Crushers being you this year. Uh, we don't talk about anything prior, right? Nothing. I just want everybody to get this out there because we're familiar with each other compared to some of my other guests. We don't talk about anything prior to this, do we? No, not at all. And I don't know if you went back and listened, and I'm not throwing you under the bus, but everybody this year is spreading positivity of be you, and I love that. It, it it just makes me feel good, and I hope it's you guys doing the same thing to wrestlers that want to come on the show or listen to say, who is this guy, da 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 It's just positivity, essentially, right? No, yeah. I mean, it's all it's all we are. I mean, it as much as we are a sport, we are entertainment in the same aspect. And it is cool to know that people are paying their hard-earned money to go and take the time out of their day or their night or their weekend, depending on if, they, if it's a weekend of shows, to see you. Yeah. So instead of being miserable, how about you be happy about it? I don't right. know. It's just fun. To, it's just fun to go, and it's just fun to cool, to be the guy that you're taking everybody out of. Sadly, the misery and BS of the world, and the constant day to day BS we have to listen to of just that brings us down, and. We just got to make people smile for a few hours. Yeah. So it's just it's just a fun time, man. It's just cool. And I, like I said, I grew up watching wrestling. I grew up smiling. So now getting to be on the other side of the smile and seeing it or frown, depending on which promotion I'm at, depending how the day is going. <laughs> <laughs> but getting to see that reaction is, is still really cool. What are your goals for, you know, it's it's early January, essentially middle of January, whatever you want to call it. What's your goals for the remainder of 2024? Belts. I want belts. I got one and I want more. Oh, now you're getting greedy. I want, I want, I want, I'm always greedy. I'm competitive, man. That's it. Uh, if you're not competitive in this business, if you're not ready to be at the top, don't be in it. Agreed. I, I, want, I want belts. I want, a new prom- I want to be in new promotions. I already got one locked in. I'm hoping to get a few more locked in. Um. I just want to do a bunch of matches, man. I just want to meet a bunch of cool people and just have some bangers and just have some good times and just make some memories, man, and get famous. Any any states that you'd like to check off or anything like that? I know you're going to say all of them, so don't give me that. <laughs> Stop. I'm Darn. Just, yeah. That's my answer. <laughs> because, yes, I know. You want to hit all 50 states this year. That would be freaking amazing. I would support you 100%. But is there any place because, you know – locally that you want to branch out to where no matter what I'm getting to California this year or something like that. Um, I really would like to try to get down to Philly this year. You know, I mean, yes, it's in the state of Pennsylvania. Um, I really want to try to get down to Philly for mania week, mania week and or weekend. Um, I'd like to try to get more of the tri-state area. I mean, I'd like to try to get to New York more, New Jersey. Um, 
being a dad, it is a little harder sometimes, like I said, to travel really far distances. Um, so like right now, a lot of the shows I work are within like an hour, hour and a half. Me, I am willing to travel those. So it doesn't really bother me too, too much. I just got to make sure I have a babysitter. Um, but yeah, definitely try to get to New York, New Jersey, maybe a little bit of like Delaware, or Maryland, something. I don't know. Whoever wants to book me, send me, send me, hit me up on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Um, let's talk. How about two years? Because next year is essentially uh, a contingency. So let's go two years. What do we want goals to be in two years? So 2026, by the end of then. And if you, say, if you say more belts, I'm going to punch you through the phone. <laughs> All the belts. Um, I definitely want to be PW, in PWI, singles and tags. Um, I think that'd be a really cool goal to be in there for. Um. I definitely would like to try and work for a bigger company like uh, MLW or um, OVW. OVW doesn't matter. One of the bigger, not necessarily like a TNA or something like that. I know that's hard to get jobs on, but um, one of the bigger indies promotions. Like I said, hit me up. Let's do some work. Let's do some talk and let's figure it out. And I know we're going to continue this as a dad. It's a little bit rougher. I understand all that, but you know, Germany, England, somebody calls if it's financially feasible and everything you're on your way, right? Oh, hundred percent. hundred percent. I would love to travel out of the country to go and wrestle. I've never been out of the country to begin with, besides like going to Puerto Rico or Canada, which I mean, Canada is technically connected and Puerto Rico is technically supported in 50 States. Um, so, yeah, no, anything out of the country, I'm there for it. As long as it's physically possible for me to do and I'm able to take the time off from the kids for a couple of days, I'll be there. Okay. Okay, so this is definitely one of my favorite questions, and there's a there's caveat to this. Your dream match, but where do you want it, who do you want it against, and what stipulation? Um, <laughs> this, this, I get that all the time when I ask this question. Like, I thought this is something that a wrestler always has in their mind. But everybody's like, I don't know. Not at all. Because I, I get, a, like, I did uh, a 2024 must-have matches. And I think I put less people on it this year than I did last year. Maybe the same amount. And I see some people do, like, 30, 40-person lists. And I'm just like, I, I can't. Because I could see someone new that's only three months into the business pop up and I'm like, oh, I want to work that guy or girl. So it's, um, it's hard to think. Uh, does it have to be an Indies wrestler? Or it, could be it could be anybody. Yeah. We, we reincarnate people as well on Can Crusher. So if somebody in the, the past, we'll bring them back for the match for you. It's a dream. Match. Anybody, yeah. Anybody, honestly, right now, if I could pick somebody, it's gotta be Osprey. I would want to wear Osprey. Honestly, I'd be cool with just a singles match. Just a singles match, Osprey, no crazy stipulation, just one on one. I just want, I just want to just be in the ring. I just want to sit underneath the learning tree for a little bit. Do you want it in stateside, at like maybe Madison Square Garden, or do you want it Kirk and Hall over in Japan? Ooh, yeah. I would want MSG, honestly. MSG, MSG from like has has my heart because like the early two thousands wrestling and just just the short garden entrance that they used to do that they don't do anymore. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I'd have to go to MSG. MSG is such a cool place to me. Yeah, it really is. I, I've been there for one wrestling event. It was, it was non televised, non anything, essentially just a real house show. And it meant so much to me. It was like, Oh my God, this is where I've been there more to watch basketball games and this, that, and the other than I have wrestling, but just walking in there, you know the the history. I'm like, oh, so yeah, I get it. I get it. All right, this is your time. Tell everybody where, you know, maybe where you're going to be in the next couple of months. We kind of sporadically said that already, but where you're going to be, your socials. Do you have any merch if they want to reach out to you to buy something? Um. Yeah. So next couple months, I got right now. It's just Smash Master in. Um, February, but then I got one another one for Smash in March, and I have two in April right now. One's for NEPW, and another one's for uh, one's for New Era, one's for um, Smash as well. 
Um, I might have another one actually in March. I'm trying to go for actually over in Rochester. So hopefully I might be checking off that New York, that New York list already. Nice. Um, but yeah, so hopefully in the next couple of areas, right around here, basically, um, I'm always messaging people though and trying to find other bookings, uh, socials. Um, I got Facebook, Instagram, Twitter or X, whatever you want to call it. I call it Twitter. Yeah, I do. Too. Um, I don't like. I don't like calling it X. It's it just sounds I don't, dirty. I grew up with it being Twitter since what was it, 2006 when it started, and I'm yeah. sorry now with that. Um, so Twitter and Instagram are at it's at my Octavius. Um, Facebook because I can't use my wrestling name as a Facebook name because it's, it's descriptive words and not like a real name. Um, so it's just my shoot name, which is Jackson Murray. Um, but it has Mr. Intellectual Tavius right next to it, so you'll know it's me. Uh, so, yeah, you can find me on those three. Um, for merch, I do have T-shirts right now. Um, I only have them on my person. I'm working on a pro wrestling tees. I'm also working on trying to get a couple more designs for merch, like which are the shirts. Hoping to try to get some stickers, maybe some keychains and stuff. So we have some ideas in the works. Just trying to go and get, them all, get the balls rolling and get some graphics picked out. Nice. Did I forget anything? Do you want to announce anything? Do you want to chat something else real quick, or is that good? Nothing else that I can really say. I mean, besides the pride, though, if anybody wants 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 a piece, hit up Miguel at Frontier Pro Wrestling and let him know, and we'll do some work and try to get a match going. I'm trying to defend this title a bunch of times this year. I'm trying to be a working champ. Yeah, the workhorse. MIT, thanks for stopping by today. This was awesome. Of course, man. It was a pleasure. I've been wanting to get on here, and I'm happy I got to do it. Hey, this is the Cardinal Nick Thompson. I loved being on the Can Crushers Wrestling Podcast, and I hope you guys loved listening to me. If you want to listen more, keep listening for future episodes. Ladies and gentlemen, MIT. Guys, I told you, I, I didn't know his dad was a professional wrestler. That's crazy. I love finding these stories out. Again, I always do this segment at the end to kind of wrap up things because – I, I, I wait for the stories. It's awesome to hear how independent wrestlers got into professional wrestling. Listen, he was a ring crew boy, young in his age, learning what to do, and that gave him the love for professional wrestling. Pause real quick on MIT. If you'd love to get your story out, reach out on Facebook, on X, on Instagram, or cancrusher69 at, e- at gmail.com. And we'll we'll set up an interview. Tell everybody. Get it out there to the masses so they can hear your story. They can follow you. They can just see what you're going through. The Each and every story is different. And I didn't know anything uh, about MIT. So I've been passing a couple shows. Hey, man, we have to hook up, yada, yada, yada. We didn't talk about any of this. And I, I love that he came up with about 800 chickens to take down an elephant because – uh, I was thinking more like a thousand or something like that, and not to get gruesome again or anything. But yeah, a couple hundred would probably go to the wayside. This was a fun interview; it really was, and I'm super excited that MIT is going to be part of New Era. So, be seeing him a lot more here in the near future, guys. Check out New Era Pro Wrestling as it, it continues to grow. It's the Facebook is out there, the Twitters, uh, the Twitter, the X is out there. The Instagram's out there. We'll have everything here on our side as well. So, yeah, MIT, thanks once again for coming on the show. Guys, remember, just because you're trash doesn't mean you can't do great things. It's called a garbage can, not a garbage cannot. Go buy some merch. And make sure you tell your loved ones you love them because you never know. <laughs>